What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a series overview for the Mega Series. This video is an updated, revised version of my previous Mega Series overview. A few more blasters have been added. The series has been changed up a bit, so I'm redoing a series overview. This video will be a brief overview of what the Mega Series is, an overview of every blaster available on the market, a firing demo, and my personal top picks. So let's jump right into it. What is the Mega Series? The Mega Series shoots Mega Darts. The Mega Darts are considerably larger than the Nerf Elite Darts. You can actually stick a Nerf Elite Dart inside of a Mega Dart and it makes that funny noise. Generally speaking, the Mega Blasters have different proportions than Nerf Elite Darts because they're shooting such bigger projectiles. The magazines are bigger, the barrels are bigger, the whole thing has to be bigger because the ammo is considerably larger. That being said, the whole philosophy of bigger is always better isn't really true, especially with Nerf Blasters. In real life, a bigger bullet or a bigger cartridge will go further and have more kinetic energy transfer so you can reach out and touch someone from beyond a thousand yards. That principle does not really apply into our Nerf hobby, so there's really no good reason to use Mega Darts in my opinion. That is, if you're a competitive performance-based Nerfer, if you're just trying to plink, it is more fun to shoot a bigger round sometimes. So general pros and cons of the Mega Series. First, they look cool. It's kind of cool to shoot a much bigger projectile through the air. And depending on their velocity and which blaster you shoot it from, a lot of the Mega Darts will whistle. Shooting out of something like the Mastodon, it's pretty intimidating to have full auto whistling darts, even if you're shooting them near somebody and not even hitting them. So that cool factor is kind of the biggest pro to use a Mega Dart, in my opinion. So the bigger size is kind of the biggest pro, but the biggest con is also the bigger size. Right here, we have a six round Nerf Elite magazine. This holds six rounds. Right here we have a six round mega magazine that comes with the Centurion. This also holds six rounds. And especially if you're the type to run tactical gear and you have many loaded magazines in pouches or whatnot, the size is really going to be a hindrance. And that's the biggest con in my opinion. But if you're all about planking and you're not about war practicality, it doesn't really matter how big it is if you're not really trying to get competitive. And it can be fun to shoot a much larger dart, so there's definitely a reason to use mega. So that's the basic introduction to the Nerf Mega series. Now I'll go through each blaster one by one. If you'd like more information on any blaster I'm about to talk about, I have full dedicated reviews on all of them. Just search the blaster name into my channel and you can watch the full review with more firing information and just more information on each of them generally. But I'll quickly overview every available blaster before I show you them fire. First up is the Mega Centurion. This blaster is a spring-powered side prime magazine fed blaster with a capacity of six darts. That's the capacity with the included magazine but this blaster is compatible with the recent Motor Strike magazine which holds 10 mega darts. But a 10 round magazine looks super weird in a sniper rifle so I'd recommend you stick with the six round. The Centurion has a gigantic prime stroke but it's pretty smooth and in my opinion it adds to the whole big bore sniper sniper feel to the Centurion. This is a gigantic blaster, very lengthy, but it has an 80 FPS chrono velocity, so it kind of fits into that sniper role. I don't think the Centurion is a war practical blaster, but it is kind of fun to plink with, especially if you are after the emotional response of feeling like a sniper. It comes with a bipod, you can go prone and kind of feel like a sniper. If that's what you're going for, the Centurion might be for you. Next up is the Mega Magnus. This blaster is spring-powered, top prime, with an internal magazine that holds three mega darts. To load the Magnus, you push the darts in through the top, through these little feeding lips right here. The Magnus has a chrono velocity of 74 feet per second. If you're looking for a primary, this obviously isn't it, but this is a little bit slimmer than other mega pistols with a three round capacity. So the Magnus might be a good option for you to hold in a holster if your game types specifically overvalue mega darts. So you can use your Nerf Elite darts in your primary and then for some target destruction or to destroy a particular type of NPC or something, you whip out this and then destroy it. And then reholster and go back to your strife or your normal Elite blaster. It is a fairly large blaster to only have a capacity of three darts, but that's kind of what you get with the Nerf Mega series. These darts are fairly large. That is the Magnus. Now Next up is the Thunderbow. This is a spring-powered band-operated five-shot blaster. The operation of the Thunderbow is pretty unique. It has a smart AR, so you can load up your five darts, then you pull back on the string, and you're cocking a spring, and after it's cocked, you just let go of the string, and it eventually fires. It's not actually band powered, so you don't have to pull it back and like let it go like it's an actual bow. That makes the accuracy better than anything band powered because you can pull back and then gently try to activate the trigger smoothly. This blaster is not war practical in any way. It's very large. It's only a five shot blaster, but it is pretty fun to use. It's actually fairly difficult to hit what you're aiming at because it doesn't have a stock and you're using your off hand to sort of aim. But I think you can tell by looking at it that it's not war practical. It is kind of fun to plank with, especially if you're like an archer, you care about that stuff and you don't want a blaster. It works pretty smoothly it is fun to use and it has a chrono velocity of 77 feet per second. I'm more of a gun guy, not a bow guy, so I don't really use this one, but that is the Thunderbow. Next up is the Mega Big Shock. However, I do not have one in my studio. The Big Shock is a spring-powered single shot blaster with a chrono velocity of 55 feet per second. This velocity is a little slow for the Mega series, but it's an emergency pistol, so many of them shoot slow. Obviously, it's not a primary, but if you want a Mega Blaster to shove in a pocket or something, the Big Shock might be for you. Next up is the Mega Cyclone Shock. This blaster is a top prime spring-powered six-round blaster. You can think of 
bit like the Mega Disruptor or the Mega Strongarm. It's a bigger blaster than the Strongarm because it shoots the Mega Darts, of course. The Cyclone Shock is similar to the Magnus in size, however, it is considerably wider. So if you're going to fit it into a holster, the Magnus will slide into most holsters a little easier. The Cyclone Shock will flop around and have more mass banging into your leg, so it might not be great as a sidearm unless you use it a lot. If it's just an occasional use, I think the Magnus will be better, however, the capacity is half that of the Cyclone Shock. And the Corona Velocity of the Cyclone Shock is about 70 FPS. I like this a lot because it operates very smoothly, but it definitely doesn't fit into everybody's rig. It's something of a specialty blaster, but that is the Cyclone Shock. Next up is the Mega Roto Fury. This blaster is spring-powered, pump-action, slam-fire enabled with a 10-round rotating drum. The prime action is pretty smooth and the rotation drum works pretty well. The Roto Fury has a capacity of 10 darts and has an average velocity of about 72 feet per second. This would be a pretty solid primary for the size and space that it consumes. It's not the highest capacity blaster in the Mega Series, but you could really run this as a reasonable primary. It's a solid blaster, but it's pretty simple, so that's pretty much all you need to know. That is the Roto Fury. Next up is the Mega Hot Shock. This is a single shot front loading blaster that's spring operated. To prime, pull back on that and then you fire. Pretty simple. The Hot Shock shoots about 54 feet per second on the Chrono, which is a little soft. And it's bigger than some of the other emergency pistols in the Mega Series. If you want the occasional sidearm to fit into a sleeker holster, this is a lot smaller than the Magnus. It's smaller from the side and it's also thinner and shorter. But the capacity is one instead of three, so it's not right for everyone. But single shot blasters are pretty boring, so I'll move on. That is the Hot Shock. Next up is the Mega Lightning Bow. This is a single shot front loading bow thing. It's spring powered, but it does not feature a catch, so it operates more like a band powered blaster. Meaning you pull it back and let it go. Compared to the Thunderbow, when you prime this back, a catch actually activates and I don't have to hold the string right now. And then you just slowly allow the catch to disengage, making it easier to be accurate with the Thunderbow. It's way harder to aim the lightning bow accurately. You have to pull back the string, maintain your sight picture, and as you're letting go, still maintain accuracy. It's very difficult to hit what you're aiming at. Furthermore, they have this little piece of plastic on the bow string, so if you put your hand on the intended grip right here, under firing, this will actually snap forward and smash into your thumb. It's very uncomfortable. If you buy one of these, which I really don't recommend, I would recommend you hold the front handle here instead of the intended grip, which is nice and comfortable, but then this thing snaps forward and really stings. One time for the camera, gonna regret it. F. <laughs> yeah, it's uncomfortable. I don't like the lightning bow at all. If you're really set on a bow and arrow style blaster, get the thunder bow, it's way better. This is pretty much just garbage and pointless, but that is the lightning bow. Next up is the Mastodon. The Mastodon is a fully automatic flywheel powered cylinder fed blaster with a capacity of 24 darts. This is a big beefy blaster. It requires six D batteries, so it's a lot of weight. However, the firepower is almost unbeatable in the mega series. It's pretty fun to use. It's flywheel powered, so you have to hold the rev switch, but then you can pull the trigger and pretty easily shoot off semi or just hold it down fully to shoot full auto. There's no selector switch, but it's fairly easy to just shoot one at a time if you want to. There's no stock and no stock attachment point, so this is sort of designed to be shot from the hip hanging down, not really behind your shoulder like a traditional rifle or carbine. But you look like an absolute badass when you're walking around with this because it's gigantic and very intimidating. With this blaster, even if you aren't striking the target you're shooting at, it can still be very intimidating if these mega darts are whistling. They can just whistle by your targets and be kind of intimidating. It's very cool. This is one of my favorite Nerf mega blasters. I like it. It's very fun and it's actually more practical. In a very particular role, if it's your primary, you might honestly get bored of reloading it constantly. It takes a while to load and it takes way less time to shoot off what you loaded. But as a specialty role, if you're behind a barrier or something and you're trying to put down suppressive fire, this is a solid one. The Mastodon's capacity is 24 darts and has a chrono average of 78 feet per second, which is pretty solid. Full auto with a high capacity and above average firing velocity, awesome package. That is the Mastodon. Next up is the Mega Double Breach. This blaster's spring powered two shot capacity with a pump action system. To load, you prime back the priming handle, then open up the loading door, then you shove in your two nerf Mega Darts. Then you shove the timing handle and you're able to fire. The double breach has a capacity of two shots and a chrono velocity of 70 feet per second. I can't really recommend anyone purchase this one. It takes forever to load. It's not that cool. It only shoots one at a time. It's not a two shot shotgun. So it's just slow. It's too big. It's really just ineffective and honestly not very fun to play with. But if you really enjoy that breaching system, that might be the only reason you buy this one. It's, it just takes too long to fire. But hey, it works well. It does what it's supposed to do. So there's no objective reason to avoid purchasing this one. Boy, it sounds like a review suddenly. Series overview, Franklin, get your head in the game. But that is the double breach. Next up is the Nerf Mega Twin Shock. The Twin Shock is a spring-powered pump action 10-shot front-loading blaster that's a two-shot shotgun. So there are 10 barrels. Every time you prime the blaster, you get to fire two darts with that one prime. If you pull the trigger halfway, you can just shoot one and then pull it all the way and shoot off the other. Or you pull hard 
and shoot both of them at once. And it also has slam fire, which allows you to shoot off all of them very quickly. It's worth noting the Twin Shock has probably the smoothest prime action I've ever touched. It's just buttery smooth, very well designed, very fun to play with. When a blaster is smooth, it doesn't necessarily perform better, but it's more fun to use. The emotional response when using the product is much better. Nobody likes to use gritty, uncomfortable, sort of mechanically garbage stuff. The Twin Shock has a capacity of 10 rounds, but it's five primes or five shots, sort of, and a chrono velocity of 73 feet per second with Nerf Mega Darts. It is a fairly large blaster for only a 10 round capacity, but it's super fun to play with. It doesn't fit into many loadouts or many game types, but if it fits, definitely try it. This is a great blaster to play with. But that is the Twin Shock. Next up is the Mega Tri Break. This blaster is spring powered with three shot capacity. To get to the barrels, you press the release inside the trigger guard, which opens up the front like this. Then you can front load in your three darts. This is a smart AR, so it fires one at a time. This front shroud adds absolutely nothing but looks. It's totally a waste of space. This blaster would be objectively better if you just ripped it off. You have to remove this stupid thing to load and it just slows you down. This blaster is just weird. It's not a true breach or anything. It's just a weird barrel cover that's just in your way. Who do you think you're fooling, Nerf? It's pointless, whatever. The tri break has a capacity of three darts and a chrono velocity of 66 feet per second. This really doesn't have any legitimate place in our hobby. If you're a competitive nerfer, even if you enjoy having fun, it's not fun to plank with. It's definitely not competitive. Three round capacity and it's gigantic. You definitely can't fit this into a holster and why would you want to? Just get a Magnus, it's better. I don't like this one, but that should be obvious. That is the tri break. Next up is the Mega Megalodon. The Megalodon is, has this weird ratchet priming system. It's spring operated with a 20 round rotating drum. To prime, you do that. This blaster also has slam fire, which works pretty reliably, making this a very battle effective, very compact powerhouse. I mean, it's a big bulky blaster, but a capacity of 20 mega darts Throw this on a sling and treat it as a secondary. Might not be the best primary, it would get annoying to reload constantly, but if your game types specifically overvalue mega darts, definitely buy one of these, put it on a sling, and when you're close to that target that requires mega darts to be taken down, you just slam fire away and destroy it in seconds. The chrono velocity of the Megalodon is 57 feet per second, which is on the slower side for the Mega Series. But in my opinion, it's still totally worthwhile. It shoots a little slow, but you have 20 shots to slam fire off. It's pretty fun. One of the few battle effective blasters in the Mega Series. I definitely dig the Megalodon, and that is it for the Megalodon. Next up is the Mega Moto Strike. This blaster is a 10 round magazine fed flywheel semi auto blaster. I was really excited for this when I saw this blaster at the Toy Fair. However, when they went to manufacture the blaster, Nerf just cut corners in all the wrong places. This trigger mechanism, as I elaborate on further in my review video, is total garbage. The return spring on the trigger constantly herp derps. You have to manually reset it almost every time you fire. It's infuriating. I would not recommend anyone purchase this at all. But again, the capacity is 10 Nerf Mega Darts. This blaster is compatible with the Centurion magazines at a capacity of six, and the chrono velocity of the Moto Strike is 71 feet per second. This is one of those that might look good on paper, but it's not fun to use, and I really don't recommend anyone check it out. Nerf can do better. They have done better, but they didn't. They've just been cutting corners, and it's infuriating. But it is what it is until Dart Zone overtakes. That is the Moto Strike. Next up is the Mega AccuStrike Thunderhawk. The Thunderhawk is a spring-powered, side-prime, clip-fed blaster with a capacity of 10 Mega Darts. This one ships with AccuStrike Mega Darts, which are significantly more accurate than standard Mega Darts. It's also got this fancy bipod right here built in, and this barrel shroud will collapse like that. It doesn't have a fake barrel in here, so it does not negatively impact your performance if you're using Mega AccuStrike darts. The built-in clip is super bulky and sticks out of the blaster. I personally prefer the Centurion. If you're going for a Mega Sniper Rifle feel, the Centurion is just better. The bipod's just located in the wrong spot. It should be up further. It just has a wonky ergonomic feel. It doesn't really feel like a normal bolt gun or sniper rifle. If you're going after that emotion of feeling like a sniper, I think the Centurion is a better pick than this one. The Thunderhawk has a capacity of 10 Nerf Mega Darts and has a chrono average of 77 feet per second. And that is the Thunderhawk. Next up is the Mega Bulldog. This blaster is spring powered with a top prime with a three shot capacity. It also transforms like that. This blaster is super gimmicky and really doesn't serve any purpose at all in our hobby. If you're after a three shot pistol like this, get a Magnus. It's better and smaller. This just feels all wonky. It's kind of fun to play with, but you know, it's just weird. Has a capacity of three darts and a chrono velocity of 70 feet per second. If you're a performance oriented or competitive nerfer, there's really no point at all to consider this one. But if you like gimmicky stuff, if you enjoy the deploy, you might like this one because it sort of deploys. That is the Mega Bulldog. Next up is the Mega AccuStrike Talon. This blaster's spring powered, bottom T-style prime with a single shot barrel. This is very similar to the Big Shock. It just has more plastic on it, but it's kind of the same thing. To load, you shove a dart in, to prime, you pull down, and you can fire. This fills the role of an emergency backup pistol, but it's bigger and harder to store into like a cargo pocket than the Big Shock. So I really don't think there's a strong place for this in our hobby, but you know, it works. You can buy it and hacksaw that off if you really wanted to. This blaster has a capacity of one and a chrono velocity of 58 feet per second. That is the Mega AccuStrike Talon. Next up is the Mega Fortnite TS. This blaster's spring powered, 
pump action with an internal magazine that holds four darts. Loading this blaster is very similar to the Mega Magnus. You can just push your darts right through the feed lips like that. And that internal magazine holds four darts. This blaster also has slam fire, which is pretty cool, but slam fire with only four dart capacity in very quickly. But if you don't like slam fire, just don't use it. It's not in the way. This blaster has a chrono velocity of 75 feet per second. There's really not a great reason to use this one if you're a competitive performance oriented nerfer. I believe this was targeted specifically at Fortnite players. And it is fun to play with. It operates pretty smoothly. So if you play Fortnite and you want to get a blaster into real life, this might be a good option for you. But it only has a capacity of one extra compared to the Magnus. And this is way more expensive and way bigger. So the Magnus or the Cyclone Shock might be a better option if you're just a nerfer and you don't care at all about Fortnite. But that is the Fortnite TS. And lastly, the Nerf Mega Fortnite HCE. This blaster is spring powered top prime with a single shot barrel that can be front loaded like that. A very simple blaster. It resembles a Desert Eagle, but I believe just like the Fortnite TS, they were just going after Fortnite fans. If you want a single shot Mega Blaster, the Big Shock and the Talon would be cheaper and smaller. With just about the same performance, the chrono velocity of this blaster is 58 feet per second. It's pretty simple, looks kind of cool, but again, it's really just for the Fortnite guys if you're just a nerfer, Big Shock or Talon all the way. That is the last blaster in the overview, the Fortnite HCE. That is a brief overview of every blaster available in the Mega Series. If you'd like more information on any one of these blasters, check out my channel, type that blaster name into my channel, and you'll find a dedicated review video on that blaster. In the review, I'll go over every feature on the blaster, show more elaborate firing, and all of the information you might need to see. Now onto the firing demo. I operate all of the blasters pretty quickly with standard Nerf Mega Darts. Keep in mind, if you ever buy extra Mega Darts, make sure you're buying Mega Accu Strike Darts. They are way more accurate than normal Mega Darts. But in my firing demo, just to be fair to all of the blasters, I shot normal Mega Darts through all of them, even the Accu Strike ones. So let's see the firing demo. Centurion. Thunderbow. Cyclone Shock. Roto Fury. Slam Fire. Hot Shock. Lightning Bow. Mastodon. Double Breach. Twin Shock. Slam Fire. Try Break. Megalodon. Slam fire. So much fun. Moto strike. Thunderhawk using normal mega darts. Bulldog also on normal Mega Darts. Ta 
Talon, also on normal Nerf Mega Darts. Fortnite TS. Slam Fire. Fortnite HCE. And that concludes the firing demo for the Mega Series Overview. That's the overview and the firing demo now to my top picks. So which blasters would I recommend in the Mega Series? I've chosen four which I like and I would recommend you consider if you're looking for a Mega Blaster. First up is the Cyclone Shock. This is a spring powered six shot pistol. If you're really into the Mega Series and you're looking for a pistol, this is a great one because it has relatively high capacity for its size and it's smooth to operate. Keep in mind its biggest con, it's pretty bulky. It's quite wide. I wouldn't personally want to hold this in a holster for more than an hour or two. If you're playing really long games and and especially if you don't use your sidearm very often, it might not be the best option for you. But if it fits your loadout and your playstyle, I definitely recommend you check out the Cyclone Shock. Next blaster on my top list is the Mega Twin Shock. I like operating the Twin Shock because it is so smooth to operate. This priming handle has got to be my favorite priming handle that Nerf has ever made. It's just buttery smooth. It's a real pleasure to use this. It's a rather large blaster, so it would be kind of a pain to run it as a secondary, and it might not be a high enough capacity blaster to run as your primary. But it has a very versatile loading system. You can shoot one at a time, two at a time. With slam fire, you can go really fast, it can just kind of do a little bit of everything. And for that reason, it makes my top list. That is the Twin Shock. Next on my top list is the Mastodon. The Mastodon is just a joy to shoot. It has a pretty high capacity, it's full auto, and you just feel like a badass when you're using it. It's super intimidating to just full auto somebody with mega darts because they whistle and it's just really fun. It's definitely not for everyone. If you're small and young, this blaster is pretty heavy. It can get a little unwieldy if you're little. But if you're a big dude and want to intimidate your opponents, definitely consider the Mastodon. And the last blaster in my top mega list is probably my favorite Mega Blaster, the Megalodon. This is, in my opinion, the most battle effective Mega Blaster available right now. The Mastodon is super fun, but it's gigantic, it's heavy, it's a little unwieldy, it has a very specific role that it can fill. The Megalodon has a huge 20 round capacity, which is a very high capacity, especially for the Mega Series. And it's so small, compact, you have two sling mounts, you can throw this bad boy as a secondary on a sling while you're using your strife or whatever, and then when you need a Mega Blaster, whip this out and spew off with slam fire 20 Mega Darts. It might not make for the best primary, I find it kind of difficult to aim this one without a stock. This priming mechanism is a little weird and takes some getting used to, but once you do, boy, it's a powerhouse. So the Megalodon is my personal favorite Mega Blaster and definitely my top pick if you're looking for a new Mega Blaster. So that's the introduction, blaster overview, firing demo, and my top picks. That's it for the 2020 updated Mega Series overview. Hopefully this overview gives you a better picture of what the Mega Series is and what it has to offer. It's definitely not for everyone, as I mentioned. There are definitely a lot of cons with using ammo this big, but for those of you that like bigger ammo and want to change up the experience, it can be pretty fun. Once again, if you want more details, check out my independent dedicated video reviews on each one of these products. Type the blaster name you're interested in into YouTube or into my channel and the review should pop up. That concludes this series overview. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical.